Okay, so now moving on to the fourth and final section of the webinar presentation. I'm going to talk a bit about improving transparency in synthesis without meta-analysis and how we moved from the term narrative synthesis to SWIM. So I'll talk about the importance of transparency and introduce the SWIM reporting guideline. So after talking about some of the problems, hopefully we have um, some solutions to offer. So first of all, transparency and synthesis. So no matter what form of synthesis we're using, the principles of synthesis are the same. We need to be transparent, so we want to clearly report the methods that we've used. We want to make clear links between the data and any charts and graphs or tables and the, the narrative text reporting the results and the conclusions. We want to combine conceptually similar outcomes from similar studies and for that the synthesis needs to be carefully and transparently organised and it needs to be conceptually appropriate and also it needs to be useful for the evidence users and we want the conclusions of the synthesis to reflect the quality of the included data. So this led us to the development of the ICONS Quant project where we're aiming to improve transparency when we can't meta-analyze. So with Hilary as the principal investigator and myself and Vital from here at the University of Glasgow, we worked with Joe McKenzie at Monash University and from the Cochrane Methods Group and Professor Amanda Soudan at the University of York. And we had several Cochrane groups collaborating with us and received funding from the Cochrane Strategic Methods Fund for two years to develop some reporting guidance. So originally the project was about reporting narrative synthesis, but you might have noticed that as we're talking through this, we're not so much referring to narrative synthesis and we're talking about reporting when we can't meta-analyze. And I'll speak a bit more about that and explain a bit more about that in a moment. So we developed these reporting items. So we didn't just make them up ourselves. We followed a Delphi consensus exercise. So for that, we consult, consulted an expert panel of systematic reviewers. We looked for all existing guidance that we could find about how to synthesize narratively. And we also conducted an assessment of what was currently being reported for narrative synthesis and synthesis when we can't meta-analyze. We took all this information and put it together to draft some provisional reporting items. And then we took these reporting items and conducted three rounds of an online Delphi survey. And that was where we consulted systematic reviewers with experience of synthesizing narratively. And through the three, over the three rounds, we developed the reporting items. And along with that, we developed some explanatory guidance and also examples, clinical and non-clinical. And after that, we held a consensus meeting with systematic review experts to agree, agree the included items, and the items were revised and finalised. So as I mentioned a moment ago, during the course of the project, it became obvious to us that it was problematic to, for us to continue referring to narrative synthesis. Because narrative synthesis is such a generic term, it means different things to different people. Sometimes even um, when people say they're doing a narrative synthesis, they're, reflect, they're referring to the synthesis of qualitative data. So we decided we shouldn't continue calling it narrative synthesis, and we came up with a different label. We call it synthesis without meta-analysis, aiming to promote clear reporting of synthesis methods. But we wanted to be super clear that the focus of our reporting guidance is on synthesis of quantitative effect data where meta-analysis of effect sizes is not conducted. So we hope by using this different term we can emphasize the focus of our guidance. So the SWIM reporting items link to several of the new Cochrane Handbook chapters. In particular, the SWIM reporting items align with chapter 12 synthesis using other methods, that's methods other than meta-analysis. 
And the SWIM reporting items also reflect content in five other chapters of the new Cochrane Handbook. So the aim of the SWIM reporting items is to improve transparent reporting. So it's important to note that they're not prescriptive, they're guidance. So they're there to prompt review authors to consider what is it important for them to report for their synthesis. The reporting items are not conduct guidance, they're reporting guidance. So for conduct guidance, it's best that people go and look to a conduct guidance such as, particularly in this case, Chapter 12 of the Cochrane Handbook. And also the SWIM reporting items were not developed to be quality assessment measures of the synthesis. So ideally, the synthesis method and the structure should be set out in the protocol of the review. However, changes to the method that's going to be used and the structure of the synthesis are fairly common and often they're quite necessary, particularly for complex questions. And where a meta-analysis is planned, but once we have all the included studies and we look at the characteristics of those studies and we look at the data that's provided in those studies, it becomes apparent that a meta-analysis is no longer appropriate. So particularly in these cases, it's crucial that the actual review clearly sets out what methods have been used and clearly reports the synthesis that has been undertaken. So broadly, the SWIM or synthesis without meta-analysis reporting items aim to prompt review authors to clearly explain how studies are grouped, the standardised metric that's used for the synthesis and the synthesis method, clearly report how data are presented and a summary of the synthesis findings, and also a, limit, uh, a reflection of the limitations of the synthesis, what it is that the synthesis that is used is able to address. So here we are. There are nine reporting items. This is their labels here. And we recently published them in the British Medical Journal, which provides an explanation and elaboration of these reporting items, along with some examples. So that's has come to the end of the presentation part of this webinar. So in the second webinar next month, we look more closely at these nine reporting items explaining what each of them in, intend to do to help authors. So to accompany the SWIM reporting items, we've developed a SWIM website. Um, that's, here's the address here on the screen. So for further information, such as further details about the second webinar and how to sign up for that, please go to the SWIM website. And also, Sorry. Oh, that's okay. On the SWIM website, you'll find information about we've set up an email discussion group, a virtual network about SWIM and synthesizing without meta analysis. So, if you'd like to find out information about that and how to sign up for that, please visit our website. And there's also further key resources about the reporting items, including a link to the open access, freely available. British Medical Journal BMG paper. And finally, we're developing online training for the WIF Cochrane training, an online training module, which will be coming out in a month or two. 